that's why. Audio is good. Now audio is good. <laughs> so now, okay, sorry, take two. We were messing with a bunch of microphones yesterday, trying to get really high quality microphones, and I was playing with a bunch of different settings and it didn't work, so now we're good. That's the value of having somebody in the room, because I would have done the entire thing, except for you told me they couldn't hear me. So let's rewind and start again. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Sean Smith, and I've been coaching and speaking and training in the Mary Kay world for over 10 years. I do a lot of private coaching. Uh, we do group coaching programs, do some seminars, etc. So I've learned a lot about the Mary Kay world. And on tonight's Hangout, we're going to talk about four things, but two really, really big things. The first one is we're going to talk about the pink truth. And I know that's a sore subject for a lot of you in Mary Kay, but it's something that needs to be talked about. Then we're going to talk about applying that to your life and your business. So we're going to talk about your pink truth. The third thing, we're going to get into marketing. I'm sorry, recruiting, magnetic recruiting. And then I guess it's a form of marketing. And then the, the fourth thing is we're going to talk about igniting your breakthrough, which is a program I'm doing. I'll tell you more about that later. So the pink truth. Many of you, I would say most of you in Mary Kay know about the pink truth. And I've never spoken publicly about it. You know, I've talked about it with private clients or in seminars and what have you. But somebody two days ago during the Q&A session of my program, Ignite Your Breakthrough, they said, what are your thoughts on thepinktruth.com? And so we had this open discussion and I never talked about it openly before and it seemed to be a very valuable discussion. So we thought, let's go ahead and make it a bigger open discussion. And if you don't know about the pink truth then you know, you've been there, then don't worry about it. Just listen to the essence and the, and the concepts that we're going to talk about because, it, you know, that is a specific group of people that really don't like the Mary Kay world, but it's all negativity. So you're going to be able to take these same concepts and apply them to any negativity in your life, any negativity in your business, right? So the pink truth really gets so many consultants and directors and nationals and the company itself it gets them all worked up, right? And, and I've been on that site before, and I've gotten all worked up as well, right? Because I don't like, you know, I just don't like the negativity in general, and I find myself wanting to, to, to defend the company or wanting to defend, you know, certain people who are alluded to or specifically talked about. Or It's like I want to defend my people, right? I want to defend my clients and my friends, etc. So I've gotten sucked in. A couple times and I think I've actually probably commented on the website a couple times and so I know what it's like to get drawn into that negativity and we actually enjoy the adrenaline rush of drama so when we see something that's dramatic there's a piece of us that just this human element that, that is drawn toward that adrenaline and then if you're talking about or somebody else is talking about something that you are obviously excited about or connected to or you know just got this emotional relationship with and, and you all have some level of emotion relationship around Mary Kay then I mean that's just gonna be a, a firestorm right so I've been there I know what it's like I've gotten caught in and here's the key the key is you've got to protect yourself right you joined a business to do something in your life and you've got to really protect yourself. So specifically with the pink truth, what's important is that you don't fuel the fire, right? Any fire needs oxygen to burn. And here's a destructive force, you know, called fire. It could it could take down homes, it could take down forests, etc., but it needs this positive element called oxygen to actually work, right? To to feed itself. And any kind of negativity like this also needs this opposite element to feed into it. And that's what creates the conflict that the pink truth lives on. If nobody cared about the website, it would just basically shrivel up and go away. It's the people that show up and get, you know, irritated and they try to 
uh, rebut the things that are said on there. They try to tell their story and they go after these people who are already negative. All that's doing is fueling the fire and you're going to lose, right? The people who have the website, the website's going to stay up, and if you post a comment that they don't like, they're just going to take it down. I mean, it's a lose-lose scenario for you. You're going to go to bed hot. You're going to get all irritated, right? You're going to get up and not feel good, or it might start creating doubts. You might start looking at things differently, and none of that is positive for you and the reason that you chose Mary Kay. So don't fuel the fire or uh, – what is it? it <laughs> okay, we moved it. Or ignore, I was just telling Ola that sometimes I write these bullets and then forget what I was going to say. Or ignore the monster. So don't fuel into it, but also don't pretend it's not there. Because it is there. And one thing that I've learned in all my years of personal development is pretending something's not there will never make it not be there. Right. So what a better strategy is with all negativity is to actually just kind of shine the light on it. And, and that's why I say don't ignore the monster. It's like a closet monster, right? The closet monster is really scary when you're imagining it being in the closet. But as soon as you open the door and shine a light on it, you'll see there's actually no monster there. Or maybe it's just, you know, a stuffed animal that it fell or whatever. And it loses all its power over you because you have acknowledged it, right? So I don't want you to just avoid the idea of pink truth or the concept of negativity in your life because that will never empower you. And all you'll be able to do then for the rest of your life is just try to avoid the triggers, right? And I don't want you to be in a position where all you can do is avoid the triggers that set you off. I want you to remove the triggers. And that's going to require you to actually look at this monster, whatever the monster is. In this case, we're talking about pink truth. And here's one of my favorite concepts. And it wasn't an easy one. It wasn't an easy one for me to understand but we all have issues in our life that we want to change right and most of us are trying to do what I was saying a moment ago most of us are trying to avoid the reality like we don't want to admit where we are in life you know we don't want to admit that we're overweight we don't want to admit that we don't have the money that we want to have we don't want to admit that our marriage is in shambles we don't we don't want to admit that stuff because it's painful but if you don't admit it if you don't if you don't recognize it, if you don't acknowledge it, then you can't change it. And so I want you to understand that before changing anything, you have to embrace it. Right? So you must embrace before you change anything. Now, embracing it doesn't mean you don't want it to change or that you like it or that you're resigning, right? It doesn't mean resignation. It just means that you're embracing the fact that here's where you are right now. And until you can say, here's where I am right now, nothing in your life can change. With something like the pink truth, you've got to embrace the fact that it exists. That doesn't mean you have to like it. It doesn't mean you have to you know, join forces or any of that sort of stuff. And embracing doesn't necessarily mean you're fueling the fire. You're just acknowledging the existence of it. Because if you don't acknowledge the existence of it, then you won't be rooted in any sort of way that you can change anything about it, really. And you're not trying to change anything about it, but you're changing your response to it. You're changing your, your ability to be victimized by it. Because if you don't embrace this, if you don't explore some of the things that we're going to talk about in a few minutes, then you're really a victim of the pink truth. And if you're a leader, if you've got team members, they might be victims. And I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally using a pretty harsh word, but that's, that's what it is. Because if you don't have control over something, then you're a victim. So that's how I'm using this word. And you're going to be an emotional victim of anything that you don't embrace as real. If you're pretending it's not real, then you're an emotional victim of that thing. If you're pretending that your marriage is not in a negative spot, then anytime that somebody mentions marriage or anytime that you have those thoughts of what it should be like or whatever, anytime somebody asks you, how's your marriage going, you're going to be an emotional victim of those triggers because you haven't really embraced what you need to embrace in order to change it, right? So I want you to embrace it so that you can make a shift. Now, 
As it relates to Pink Truth, the website, the bottom line is it's a bunch of people who don't like Mary Kay. And there's plenty of people out there. I mean, Mary Kay's been around 50 years. There's all kinds of people that don't like Mary Kay because they had a negative experience, you know, somewhere. And you can't make it your mission in life to change the opinions of all those people, right? They are who they are and just, just love them and, and don't get caught up into it, right? But if you understand why negativity exists and why it festers and, and how people actually use it, then it'll help. And so what I want you to know is that pain gets projected. One of the concepts that totally changed my life in personal development is when I heard the concept that hurt people hurt people. And at first I didn't even understand how the phrase was, was being positioned. But it means people who hurt people are hurting themselves, right? So only hurt people hurt other people. And if anybody is projecting negativity, it means there's some kind of pain that they have that they're just playing hot potato with, right? That because that's pretty much what humans do. We just play hot potato with our pain because we don't we don't like to touch it, we don't like to feel it. So it's like, all right, I'm gonna throw it over on you, you know. And sometimes that goes on to our loved ones. Sometimes that goes on to you know whoever. But people generally project their pain because they don't want to own it internally. So if you take a look at you know pinktruth.com, everybody on that page who is spewing their negative opinions about Mary Kay just means they're in some level of pain. They're angry, they're embarrassed, they feel taken advantage of. There's some negativity that they're experiencing and they want to blame other people. Now, I, I'm also not attacking everybody on that page because they're doing the best they can with the resources they have too. And I think it's important that you come to an awareness around them as people, as human beings, because everybody on the planet is doing the best they can with the resources that they have, with the pain that they're currently experiencing, etc. But pain just gets projected. So these people are blaming or shaming or pointing fingers at others, you know, shifting responsibility, saying it's the company's fault, saying it's my director's fault, saying it's somebody else's fault, but they're doing the best they can with the pain that they have. And here's the cool thing about this concept. When you start seeing people for their pain, you have more compassion. You have more compassion for the human journey. You have more compassion for the human spirit. You also have more compassion for yourself. And when you understand that all negativity, whether it's crimes being committed or a website like this that we're talking about or people just yelling at others or whatever, you know, abuse, all negativity is the, is the projection of pain then it'll be easier for you to disengage and see what's actually going on, right? And maybe even turn it to something, you know, somewhat humorous. That's my personality. Like maybe you even see that these people, or you say to yourself or other people, oh, they're just, they're just hot potatoing their pain. They're just really throwing it on other people so that they don't have to experience it because then you won't get emotionally engaged in it and it won't cause you to suffer, right? It won't bring you into the misery. So pain always gets projected. And here's the other thing. I, I already alluded to this. Success breeds negativity. Mary Kay is a super successful company. Everything out there, every institution, every religion, every positive concept has people that don't like it or people that don't trust it or people that tried it and, you know, and didn't like it. As, as much as it pains me to even consider this, like there are some people who don't like Apple. There are people who don't like the iPhone. And to me, that blows me away, but they had their own experience with it, right? I love everything about Apple and the iPhone, but success is always going to bring negativity for some reason. So what if you took negativity and specifically the being truth as confirmation that Mary Kay's actually doing some good things? Because if they weren't doing some good things, then these people wouldn't have the opinions that they have, but you have to let them have their opinions. That's the big piece here. You gotta let them have their opinions. And now he, this, this, next, this next concept is where everything starts to shift for you. So if you wanna stay, if you wanna become and stay educated and empowered, 
I don't want you to emotionally engage in the conversation to the point that you feel the fire, but you got to know about it. You have to know as many uh, of, of the perspectives that are out there. And I think you have to know about it for a couple of reasons. Number one, you just have to understand why people say the things they do, that there's all these other experiences of Mary Kay and it doesn't have anything to do with you, etc. So there's that personal relationship to the negativity. And the more that you know about it, you know, the, the, the less power that it has over you, right? Because ignorance is one of the things that fuels our hatred. It's one of the things that fuels our fears, right? It's one of the things that fuels our doubts and worries is being ignorant. So if you don't know about a certain religion or a certain political affiliation or a certain perspective that other people have, you don't know about it. It'll actually fuel your uh, your irritation around it, right? And it'll get you in, into more of being that emotional victim. So your own personal empowerment requires that you've got education around it. But if you're a leader, we actually had several people that reached out to me either on Facebook or via email and, and said, man, I'm so glad you're doing this call because I just had a team member ask me about pink truth or I just had a couple people quit and what we found out later was you know they were exposed to pink truth and so if you're a leader don't turn the other cheek and just pretend it's not there right and I already talked about that as it relates to you but now I want to talk to you as it relates to leadership you have a responsibility to set people up to think for themselves to be successful in Mary Kay and to be empowered and so the same concepts that I want you to apply to your life, I want you to apply to your leadership. And I want you to empower your people to think on their own and also to sort of shine that light. Because here's the deal. If you have team members that are not really rooted yet in Mary Kay, and some of you are in this position. So as I'm talking to the leaders about the team members, I'm actually specifically talking to you. Some of you will put yourself in this scenario. If you have team members that aren't really rooted in Mary Kay yet, they don't have leverage, they don't have certainty, they're not you know, fully committed for whatever reason, those doubts are going to lead them to find things that are basically going to confirm why they shouldn't do Mary Kay. And so if you have somebody that is kind of on the fence, not committed, and they stumble across pink truth on their own, or they hear somebody mention it, or they're just open to all this negativity, they're going to be blown out of the water right away and if you are just trying you know to put your blinders on and trying to keep them from being exposed to all that stuff instead of teaching them how to think instead of you know just just talking to them about the reality listen not everybody's had a fantastic experience of Mary Kay not everybody's had a fantastic experience of anything right I mean more than half the marriages in the United States split up that doesn't mean you shouldn't get married it means that more than half the people aren't doing it right you know most people that get into the stock market don't make money. That doesn't mean that Warren Buffett should leave the stock market because he's doing it right. So just because people or, or an entity or an opportunity has people who haven't succeeded, that doesn't mean that the opportunity itself is nasty. And so as a leader, I really implore you to empower your people to think. And one of the best ways you can do that is give them all the information. Now, it doesn't mean, I'm not saying like sit them down in front of the computer and walk them onto pinktruth.com. Maybe you talk about negativity in general, but, the, but the, the key here is you've got to have some level of education in order to know what's out there, right? So there's a lot of valid points on pinktruth.com, and I'm not saying they're valid because they're true or that I agree with them. They're valid to the person that posted them. That makes it valid to them. And if they have these sentiments toward Mary Kay, it's important that you know that that's out there. It's important that your team members know that that sentiment is out there. Whether they actually get exposed to the website or not, it doesn't matter, but they have to know that there's a sentiment out there so that they can be prepared to deal with it if and when it shows up. And that's one of the biggest mistakes I think most, most leaders in direct sales in general make, and a lot of directors in Mary Kay make too, is they try to protect their people so much that when they get exposed to certain things, they don't know how to react because they haven't been prepared for this. So the level of detail that you want to go into with your team, that's up to you. 
But what I'm telling you is you've got to educate people, you've got to empower them so that when they, when they hear somebody say, oh, Mary Kay, that's a cult. I had somebody that did that one time and all they try to do is make you buy products, blah, blah, blah. If that's the first time they've heard that and they get shocked and they go, whoa, I don't know how to deal with that, they are going to be much more vulnerable than if they already know that there might be people that say that out there. And here's how I want you to think about it. Here's how I want you to respond, etc. So anyway, uh, so this whole conversation is really about empowerment for you, right? As long as we open it up. And then here's another piece as I was, as I was thinking about pink truth. Because I said that some of these people actually have valid points. And let's all also be 100% honest for a second. Mary Kay has 2 million people plus in the company last time I counted. And anytime there's a bunch of people, there's possibility for negativity. There's possibility for cheating. There's possibility for desperation. There's possibility for people doing things that they shouldn't be doing that are against the rules of the company. And there's been a lot of people that have mispositioned or mistreated this company. And so if you have people that are saying Mary Kay is one way and then somebody else comes in and they experience Mary Kay another way, that's a valid point. Like this is not the way that you said it was supposed to be, right? So here's my point. Some people, and maybe some of you, I don't know, this is a check-in for yourself. Some people are not positioning Mary Kay truthfully. And if you're not positioning Mary Kay truthfully just because you want to get people in, because a lot of people will lower the bar, they'll dumb down the opportunity just to get people on their team, and that is a huge mistake for you to make. If you just say, hey, listen, you can get into a pink Cadillac. I've heard people say this. You can get into a pink Cadillac just by working a few hours every week part-time. You don't even have to do hardly anything. Just give me your people. I'll take care of all of it. Just you know, place an order every here and there, every, every once in a while, and you can be driving a pink Cadillac too. There are some people who position Mary Kay like that. Not most of them, but some of them do. So if you recruit me like that, and then I get into the company, and I realize there is no way in the world that I could even get to directorship on a few hours part-time, not putting in any work, let alone getting into the pink Cadillac. Now you've broken rapport with me because you've lied to me. And if you flat out lied to me, then I will have a very valid point taking that breach of integrity and putting it on to Mary Kay, right? So I'm not saying that all of you are doing that or even most of you are doing that. But what I do know is true is that a lot of people, usually out of desperation, will do anything they can to get people into the business. And you're doing a disservice to the company you're doing a disservice to the, to the vision and the mission of Mary Kay Ash herself, but ultimately you're doing a disservice to you and your business. That's never going to lead to a positive foundational team if you're just doing anything you possibly can, saying anything you can in order to get people into the company. So some of those people on pinktruth.com and some of those negative sentiments out there, they're totally valid because they've literally been lied to. And we don't know what their experience is, so there's no reason for us to jump in and to get you know super judgmental or to fight whatever we think might be that good fight and ultimately fuel the fire and miss out on you know the opportunity to be empowered, etc. So anyway, I went you know really deep on this on this particular discussion because it needs to be had. This this topic needs to be talked about, you know, because it's real. It needs to be talked about simply because it's real. And it doesn't matter if we talk about, you know, oh, they should have this side or they shouldn't have this side or it should be brought down or Mary Kay corporate should go after them and sue them. Or whatever. None of that stuff is going to help you live a better life. And ultimately, isn't that why you joined Mary Kay? Is to live a better life. So let's talk now about your pink truth. What is your truth inside of Mary Kay? And the first thing I want you to ask yourself is, what are you searching for? Because here's what I know. Whatever you're searching for, you'll find 100% of the time. So are you searching for people who don't have money? Are you searching internally, unconsciously, for people who have negative feelings about Mary Kay? Are you searching for people who are afraid to take risks? Because if you're searching for them, you'll find them. 
And then you'll just get all this confirmation that Mary Kay is difficult, Mary Kay doesn't work, I can't succeed, right? So how you set your focus filter is going to determine your experience in the company. And if you are determined to find people that want more out of life also, then you'll find those people because you won't get stuck with the people that don't fit that profile of who you're determined to go find. So what are you actually searching for? And this has to be an honest question and an honest answer. What am I searching for? And whatever that is, right, whatever that is that you're searching for, not just within Mary Kay, but also in your life, whatever that is, you also have to understand that Mary Kay is not the answer to what you're missing in your life. Mary Kay is not going to rescue you. It's not up to Mary Kay to work for you. Mary Kay is nothing more than a neutral opportunity. And you're going to come in and you're going to do whatever you're going to do with it. The same opportunity, some of you are struggling right now. The same opportunity that you are struggling with, right? The same starter kit, the same website, the same access to all the training on InTouch and all the CDs you have access to and the same events, that same exact opportunity that you are struggling with is the same opportunity that all the national sales directors are thriving with. It's the same opportunity that plenty of people in this company, whether they've hit national or a director or they're just a very, very happy consultant, it's the same exact opportunity that other people are thriving with. And I'm not saying that to make you feel bad. Because if you are feeling bad, then that means you're being a victim and you're not taking ownership of that, right? I'm saying this to empower you because you got to realize it, it's, it's not Mary Kay that's doing this to you. It's just there's something in the way you're doing Mary Kay that's not working for you. And that's empowering because if there's something that you're doing, then you can change it, right? But if there's something that's being done to you, you can't change it until that thing or, that, or those people come rescue you. And what I know in personal development in general and in Mary Kay specifically, there's a lot of people who are waiting for other people to come rescue them. So it's not your director's job to rescue you. It's not your national's job to rescue you. It's not Mary Kay, the company, corporate job to rescue you. They've provided a neutral opportunity and it's your job to get out of it whatever it is that you want to get out of it. And, and that's unique to you. That's unique to you. You have to really understand what you need in life to win the game. And I don't know what win the game means for you. For some of you, win the game means become a multimillionaire. Fantastic. What do you need for that? For some of you, win the game means feel better about yourself. Have a place that you feel like you belong to. You know, have friends. Be able to, to get these products that you really enjoy and love and, and, you know, get them cheaper. Maybe that means win the game for you. So you have to decide what that is. But understand that Mary Kay is a vehicle. That's all it is. And I know you know this. I know you, many of you train this exact same stuff. You get it. But if you're still experiencing your business negatively, then you don't really get it. You just get it intellectually, but you haven't gotten it you know, in your body yet. You haven't gotten it emotionally yet. So I don't want you to ask yourself, do I understand this intellectually? I want you to ask yourself, do I do this energetically? Do I do this emotionally? Right? And the more that you understand something with your head, but you don't get it in your heart, the more disconnect that that, that creates and the longer that that uh, is, is, you know, um, lasts, the longer that that, that that tension lasts, the harder it is to make any kind of breakthrough, right? Because you just fall into these patterns, etc. So whatever you need in your life, Mary Kay is a vehicle. Mary Kay is not the game. Mary Kay is not the game. You will not be sitting on your deathbed wondering if you became a national sales director or if you became a director or if you got into the red jacket or any of the tangible goals. And I'm not, you know, poo-pooing those goals. There's nothing wrong with having those tangible goals. I want you to succeed and achieve those goals. But let's understand what those goals are. Those goals are just ego goals. Those goals are not fulfillment goals. You're not going to look back in your life and go, wow, I really lived a good life because I drove a pink Cadillac. I really lived a good life because I became that national sales director. No, no. What will cause you to decide that you've lived a good life is have you fulfilled your values? Have you served other people? Have you left 
you know, the, the planet or your family better because you were here. And, and you have to discover what that means to you, but then you have to act like it. When you decide what you need to live the life that you want to live on this one shot that you have on the planet, and you got to act like that. <laughs> Something just fell. You got to act like that's the most important thing. Like your fulfill the fulfillment of your values is more important than the achievement of your goals. The fulfillment of your values is more important than the achievement of your goals. Because if you achieve your goals but don't fulfill your values, you're going to have empty success. You might have tangible success. People might think you're successful. You might achieve some of the things that once upon a time you said you want to achieve. But if that's empty, you know, you're going to feel this, this level, this experience of hollowness that, you know, this emptiness that's going to cause you to just question everything about the way you did life, about the way that you, you know, built your business. So I want you to be more or, or, or anything, right? Did your relationships. So I want you to be more committed to the fulfillment of your values, what's most important to you, rather than the achievement of your goals. And the cool thing is, when you're more committed to the fulfillment of your values, it's easier to achieve your goals. That's the, the, uh, the honest truth, right? So as I was thinking and talking to Ola and talking you know, to different people in our community about the pink truth, I started thinking, like, what if we actually took that and, and embraced it and all the things that I was talking about, but what if we actually shifted it? Because one of the coolest things to do in life is when you take something that used to be negative and just take, don't even change the thing, but just make it positive, right? So what if we took the whole energy around pink truth, even the words themselves? What if we took this phrase? If, okay, if I was Mary Kay Corporate, and I'm not, but if I was the company, I would make a pink truth campaign. I would start a pink truth campaign. And you guys would be tweeting about it. You would be posting about it on Facebook. I, you might be buying t-shirts that talk about the pink truth. Because do you know what that would do to the website? It would make it all just shrivel up and go away. Because the power of the 2 million Mary Kay consultants taking that phrase and making it positive will basically make the website completely go away and all that irritation completely go away. At least the trigger that the phrase has would go away. So in my world, if I was the company, I would tell you start using this phrase. Not only do I not want you to avoid it, I want you to use it positively and I want you to reframe it and redefine what that is. So I'm going to give you what I think your pink truth should be. I think your pink truth should be your purpose. We talk about that all the time, right? What's your purpose in America? What's your why? What's your mission? What's your vision? What, what are you here to do? So that's part of your pink truth in Mary Kay. The other P is passion. When you really get rooted in your purpose, you're going to have a level of passion that is so magnetic that people have to pay attention to you. And people who are driven by passion get things done in life. People who are driven by intellect or fear or doubt or worry, they don't usually get a whole lot of things done in life. So I want you to be driven by passion. And then the third one is path. What's your path? What's your journey? And I want you to understand that, that your path is sacred. Like you've been put on this planet and you've been put in this company for some level of divine appointment, you know, for some kind of divine appointment, for something that you got to learn. What is it that you have to learn? And your path is sacred to you and it's unique to you. The things that you've got to learn are not the same things that the person right next to you at your unit meeting has to learn. So your paths are not going to be the same. And when you remove any of the negative energy around your path, around your journey, and you embrace it, and you realize that everything in the world, and specifically everything in, in Mary Kay, is not happening to you, it's happening for you. It's happening for you in support of your path. It's, 
It's happening in support of your journey. Then it'll be so much easier to, to handle anything that happens, right? Whether it's people not showing up at your meetings or flip charts falling down or people lying to you or whatever. It's so much easier to handle that when you realize it's part of my sacred journey. It's part of my sacred path. I must have needed this for some reason. And that will basically dissolve any of your negativity. You won't have a lot of pain to project onto other people, including yourself. Most importantly, yourself. Most importantly, yourself. There are way too many people on the planet, but specifically in Mary Kay, way too many of you beat yourself up brutally. Way too many of you are literally your own abuser. And that's not going to help you enjoy life. It's not going to help you achieve anything in Mary Kay. Certainly not going to help you fulfill any of your values. And if you're most committed to joy and happiness and whatever those, you know, those values are to you, if you're most committed to that, then you've got to be bigger than any of the negativity. You've got to be bigger than other people's opinions. You've got to be bigger than this idea, made up idea called rejection. You've got to be bigger than that. Because we're talking about your life. We're talking about fulfillment of your values on this planet. We're talking about teaching your kids what you want to teach them. We're talking about living a blissful marriage or you know, friendship you know, inside your family with just anybody that you come across. Whatever that looks like to you, I want you to be more committed to that and be bigger than anything else that's going to sabotage that. Right? So I would love for you to tell me what your pink truth is. If you're on Pink Caddy Coach, or I'm sorry, Pink Caddy Hangout right now, there's a Facebook comment section down below. I know some of you have probably already been chatting in there. I want you to tell me what your pink truth is. And it could be a simple one line. You could pick one of these things, you know, purpose, passion, or what your sacred path is. But I want you to tell me what your pink truth that you're committed to achieving in this business is. Because you have to be committed to achieving what you say is going to be your truth before you actually commit to the truth or, or, or experience rather. You've got to commit to the, you've got to claim it. You've got to claim the truth that you're going to experience before you, the, the truth actually is experience, right? So Stephanie Redmond, did she put it on Facebook? Okay, so Stephanie, uh, Stephanie just posted that you can hashtag my pink truth. I want to start a movement, you guys. How cool would that be to start a movement, to take this phrase back, right, and shift it so that it's empowering for you. And the pink truth is now, what are you committed to experience in Mary Kay? And when you claim, I'm getting goosebumps like this. This is, this is so exciting to me when you just take back power right, from something that had power over you, from something you were afraid of, and you just take it back. That's what we're doing. And so I want you to be committed to what is it that you are claiming as your truth in Mary Kay. And I love Stephanie's idea. Thank you, Stephanie. You're awesome. Go ahead and hashtag my pink truth. That way we can look it up uh, later. And I want to I respond to all of you that hashtag my pink truth. So for those of you that aren't super savvy on Facebook, post on Facebook and do a little hashtag, right? Hashtag, a little pound sign, and type in my pink truth. Then we can search for it later and I can find your comments. My pink truth. So the truth is that you're going to find whatever you choose to find. The truth is that your level of success in Mary Kay is your choice. The truth is there are people out there who are in pain and they will try to hurt others. The truth is there are people out there who have had negative experiences in Mary Kay and they want to tell everybody else, especially in today's Yelp society, right? You have a bad experience and they want to yell it on top, you know, from, from the highest mountains and let everybody know that I've been wronged, right? Life is unfair to me. The truth also is that you have more power inside of you than most of you have been willing to embrace. And the truth is that you have the ability to call the shots in your life, in your Mary Kay business. The truth is all of that other negativity, whether it's the website we've been talking about, 
or people who tell you you shouldn't be doing what you're doing or anybody else that is doubting you or creating any of the resistance, the truth is you have power inside of you. You have strength inside of you, courage and wisdom that infinitely outweighs all of that other little stuff. But the truth also is you have to play the game. You have to be more committed. As we were talking about this whole sacred path idea, uh, Ola mentioned it's like shoots and ladders. And so he started like talking about, you, you all hopefully, you know the game shoots and ladders, right? So you're going along the game board and sometimes you land on a square and you, and you, you fall down the chute and it goes all the way down. And, Sometimes it takes you one level down and, you know, there's a couple of them that take you like seven or eight or nine levels down or however many levels there are. And then the only way to get back up is to, you know, travel across the thing or you can take a little bit of a shortcut and climb your way back up on the ladder. But one of the reasons that most people underachieve in their life is because they're more committed to the convenience and the laziness of the shoots than they are to the effort that's involved in climbing up the ladder. And if you're more committed to convenience, and in that convenience, you're more committed to laziness, then you're choosing underachievement. Whatever that means to you, however you define that, you're choosing mediocrity. You gotta see that you're choosing the outcome of the decisions that you make. And that's why most people won't succeed in life. That's why most relationships, whether it's marriages or any kind of relationship, friendship, business partnership, most of those are not going to succeed. Most people are not going to make the money that they want to make. Most people are not going to experience what they want to experience in life because they're more committed to their convenience. They're more committed to the short-term pleasures or avoiding the short-term pain than they are to their long-term experience in life. And how you answer that question of what are you more, more committed to, convenience or success, that determines everything. It determines everything you achieve in Mary Kay. It determines everything you achieve in life. We lost sound. We lost sound? We lost sound. I still I see sound coming in. If you, um, if you can still hear me, what should we just have them do? Oh, we're back up? Okay. All right, we had a little minor AV scare, but now I know you guys can see or can hear. So magnetic mark or magnetic recruiting, um, this is a big chunk of content. And I'm going to go through it quick just because the time we had, you know, that we have here. And this conversation around negativity and the pink truth is the deeper conversation that I want you to engage in. But I do want to give you a little bit of content around recruiting because – when you say, all right, my truth is I'm going to experience this in Mary Kay, you can't get away from the fact that recruiting is going to be a part of pretty much every goal that you have. So after you've made this shift, I want to get this recruiting conversation in your new awareness so that you can see it through a different filter and you can see that the energy can absolutely shift quickly because recruiting, success in recruiting is not – about what you say or what you do, success in recruiting is about how you be. Success in recruiting is about how you show up. It's your energy. It's not the words. It's not what you put on your body or how you do your hair or how you do your meds. It's none of that stuff. It's how you show up. It's your energy that's going to magnetically attract or repel people, right? So once we make the shift that we've just been talking about, this is all going to be so much easier. So I'm going to fly through this pretty quick. The four biggest mistakes that I see in recruiting. This is probably the biggest one. Number one is talking too much. Talking too much. When you talk a lot, you're going to repel people because you're going after them. But when you do more listening, because you got two ears and one mouth, right? We've heard that analogy. When you do more listening and they do more talking, they will be drawing themselves into your opportunity, into your conversation, into their heart, into their dreams, etc. So just understand that the more you're talking, the less they are being engaged into their own dreams, into their own heart. You need people to go internal, into their own 
internal resources, right? You need people to go inside their own drivers, inside their own dreams. And they're not going to do that the more that you talk. So you've got to listen. Let them talk more. The second biggest mistake is when you think that recruiting is really just about transferring information. Recruiting is not an intellectual game, right? I mean, look, most of you are women. You know you don't go intellectually buy a pair of shoes, right? There, we buy things and we do almost everything in life from an emotional perspective. We try to justify it logically, but we do everything that's big emotionally. At least that's our draw to it, right? So nobody is going to get into Mary Kay and deal with all the obstacles and the sabotage and the possible disruptions because intellectually they like the information because they think, oh, this would be a good tax break for me or this would maybe give me a good retirement plan. There's not a single one of you when you were asked when you were in middle school or elementary school and somebody said, what do you want to do or have or be when you grew up. Not a single one of you said, I want to have a really good retirement account. And none of you said, I want security. Or I just really want a tax break. None of you said that. And that doesn't mean that that's not important. There is an element of intellect that's important, but that's not what drives you. That's the key. It's not what drives you. If any of you are, are being challenged in Mary Kay internally, and you think that you're in Mary Kay to make money or to get security or to have a retirement plan, I can promise you your heart is not in that. I can promise you that. Your heart is never in, engaged in the idea of security. Because the only time that security is valuable is when something bad happens. That's not what drives your heart. That's not what drives your unconscious mind. It's what drives your head because your head wants to be safe. But your head will not, your head does not have the power to outweigh all of the emotional obstacles. Only your heart does. So you've got to be more heart-centered in everything you do with yourself as well as your, con your conversations about recruiting and everything. So you're not just transferring information from your head to their head. You're really transferring emotion. And you want to inspire them to look into their heart. The third mistake that I see people make is taking responses personally. Now, first I put taking results personally, and that's an element of it too, but specifically what melts most people down are the responses that they get from others, right? The responses that somebody else says that they're not interested or you shouldn't be doing what you're doing or whatever. It's those personal responses that will really melt people down. But the bottom line is whatever somebody says to you, is 100% dependent on who they are, right? I don't know how many people are watching this right now. Let's say there's 500 people watching. There are 500 different opinions of who I am. And it really doesn't have anything to do with me. It has everything to do with you and how you see the world and how you see men in green shirts and how you see people on Facebook and how you see videos. Like, it has everything to do with your perspective of the world. So in reality, your opinion of me almost has nothing to do with me. It only has to do with what I trigger in you. And, I, and you got to understand that that's the way everybody's doing everything in life. So other people's opinion of you really doesn't have anything to do with who you are or your value as a person. It's just their perspective on the planet. And I know this is an easier one to understand intellectually than it is to really get, but you got to get it. Like you really have to truly understand it so that you can get it. Now when it comes to recruiting, here's the bottom line. You have one job. This will keep you emotionally detached once you really get this. You have one job. Your only job is to invite. You invite people to phone calls. You invite people to meetings. You invite people to look at a website. You invite people to try the product. You invite people to a skincare class. You invite people to a facial. You invite people to career conference. You invite people to whatever. That's your only job is you invite and they decide. You invite, they decide. If you lived by this mantra and you really believed, I invite, they decide, I invite, they decide, the more invitations I put out, the more decisions are made. The more decisions are made, the more people say yes, the more people say no. If you really just operated that way in your business, your, your business would explode. Like there's no, there's, there's nothing that you could accomplish in your business if you just take the emotion out of it and you just keep making invitations. Invite, 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 and they decide. 
And then the other biggest mistake is prejudging people. This is one of the worst things that people do. Like you see somebody who is all dressed up, right? They look like they've got their corporate attire on and you decide that they would be really good in this business. And you decide that they have a lot of money and you decide that they have a lot of contacts. And so you go talk to them and you've decided that they're going to be powerful and they're going to say yes. And then they say no and you're crushed. And the reason that you're crushed is because prejudging leads to expectations. And so it's not their response that crushed you, it's your expectation not being met that crushed you. And every time you prejudge anybody, you're creating an expectation. There's no expectation, there's no judging in the invitation, you just invite. If you invite with no expectations and they decide, I promise you, you're gonna clear a lot of the desperate energy that repels the very people you're looking for. The very people you're wanting to be on your team, many of you, I would say most of you in my experience, are repelling those people with the energy that you're giving off. Now, a lot of it has to do with those prejudgments, right? And a lot of those prejudgments are about you. But that's a topic of another conversation. The single most important energetic shift that will totally change the game for you in your business, and specifically in recruiting, is when you go from selling – which is what most people are focused on. How can I sell the opportunity, sell products, sell the idea that they need to come to the event? Whenever you're focused on selling, you're gonna set yourself up to fail. There's judgments, there's expectations, there's limiting beliefs about what you can and can't do. You're gonna trigger all of that stuff because you're in the process, right? You're doing the selling, and that means if somebody says no to you, it's gonna affect you more. But if you stop selling, and you just made the shift to serving. Almost everything takes care of itself. And I know this is another one of those things that a lot of people know intellectually, but most people don't really get it because they're still being shut down by a lot of the challenges, right? But service doesn't have fear attached to it. You've never been afraid. I've never met anybody in, in my entire career of 10 plus years ever met anybody who has the fear of serving people or the fear of helping people people have the fear of sales they have the fear of recruiting they have the fear of um, speaking in public they have the fear of being pushy they have all these fears that are based on selling nobody has ever in my experience ever had the fear of helping people and so if this is where all of your fears live and none of your fears live here I suggest you play on this level because you won't even have to worry about all your fears. They don't live here. They can't live here. And the reason is because in service, there's no evil twin. In selling, there's an evil twin. If you show up and ask somebody for their name and number and you're thinking about getting a prospect, you're thinking about possibly them being the one that pushes you over the line, that gets you into the red jacket or gets you into director seat, suits, or get you into the Cadillac or whatever. You're coming from that place of getting something. You're, you're focused on gaining something. Anytime you're focused on gaining something through selling, there's always the possibility of losing something. They come together. You can't have the possibility of gaining without the possibility of losing, which means losing is the evil twin. And the evil twin is what brings all of your fears. It's what brings all of your limiting beliefs. Service doesn't have an evil twin. There's, there's no downside to it. If people don't take you up on your invitation and you really truly come from a place of service, you cannot melt down. You cannot take it personally because they simply didn't take you up on your offer of service. And the more that you live inside of this energetically, the more that you're going to sell, the more that you're going to recruit, the more people that are going to want to be around you, right? So you're going to have all the tangible success when the tangible success is not what is driving you. And it's, it's a difficult thing for a lot of people to get, but it's 100% true, and it's the way to make the business and pretty much every experience in the business just feel better for yourself and for other people. All right, let's go through the five characteristics of the world's best recruiters, the world's best recruiters. Number one, I probably won't talk too much about these. We'll see about that. Number one, Consistent and relentless. Creating habits and creating success is more about consistency than it is about your skill set. 
you've got to be relentless in what you're going after and what you're committed to in what you now have as your pink truth. You've got to be relentless in that stuff. Number two, the world's best recruiters are transparent and authentic. They show up as real people. They're not afraid to be vulnerable. Real people are attracted to other real people. Don't try to pretend that you're you know, perfect and you have no flaws. That's going to repel anybody that knows any better you know, about human behavior. So be transparent, be authentic. It'll feel better for everybody all the way around. This is probably my favorite one, number three. The world's best recruiters, and I would say the world's best livers, right? Everybody who experiences life to the, to the best degree, in my opinion, which is about fulfillment and helping others and all that stuff, they have eternal optimism. Eternal optimism. Most people have conditional optimism. I'll be optimistic as long as everything's going my way, right? Oh, I'll be optimistic when I feel like it. I'll be optimistic if I can see the end, if I know it's going to succeed. That's conditional optimism. And your level of optimism will determine the success because you'll find what you're looking for all the time, right? So what if you just claimed optimism before the evidence of optimism showed up? How would your life be different? And then if any other evidence showed up, you wouldn't even pay attention to it because what you're on the search for are reasons to be optimistic, reasons that your, your sacred journey, your sacred path is fun, right? And it's valuable. So I want you to commit. Just try it for one day. Just try it for one day to be eternally optimistic. Whatever your level of optimism is, just turn it up and live there. And let's see how that changes things for you. Uh, number four is, this is really a characteristic of all high achievers. Number four is selective memory. What if you only remember the things that served you? How cool would that be? What if there was just a switch in your brain? You're like, ah, I'm going to just switch it to only positive stuff. And all you could remember was positive stuff. You couldn't remember what anybody said to you in school that made you feel bad. You couldn't remember all the times you messed up. What if you only remembered the times that you succeeded and you only remembered the things that make you feel good? The world's best athletes, the world's best performers, they have that selective memory and you don't have to give any energy to all the negative memories you can just decide I want to focus on this one because this one serves me and if you were more committed to simply plugging into things that serve you instead of things that were true your whole life would change right just choose the story that serves you better and then the fifth one is and I think if you do all these other ones you'll probably end up here even without a whole lot of effort but they just live in gratitude and joy. You know, every single day you can decide that, that you're going to be grateful and that you're going to be full of joy. And no matter where you are in your level of recruiting or your level of life or relationships or finances, wherever you are, if you were to take each one of these five characteristic traits and just turn each one of them up just a little bit, your experience of life and your experience in Mary Kay would greatly increase. And the last thing we're going to talk about with recruiting, and again, we're going to go fast. I've done like full conference calls just on objections, but it's tough for me to talk about recruiting without mentioning objections because it's one of the issues you know, that most people um, wrestle with because they're afraid of objections. So overcoming objections easily. And a lot of the easy part happens when you shift your energy in, in the ways that, we've been, that I've been talking about. I want you to, first of all, embrace questions as, what did I want? I. Embrace questions as interest. That's what I want. Embrace questions as interest. What if you just decided that it was part of the process? You're going to make an invitation and they're going to ask a question. Instead of you deciding and labeling it as an objection, which feels like confrontation, and I don't know hardly any human beings that enjoy confrontation. If you just label it as interest and you label it as a, as, a, as a question of interest, then it'd be so much easier for you to not get frustrated by it or for you to not be combative at it or what have you. So embrace it as part of the process. And I would actually be a little suspicious if somebody didn't ask questions, especially about the opportunity. 
Like you're just going to join this thing. You're going to join an opportunity that could potentially change your life and not have any questions about it. I'd be more afraid of that person than the person that has a bunch of questions. Well, what happens if this, and what happens if this, and what happens if this? Now, obviously, you know, there are two different ends of the spectrum and, and we don't, you know, either end of the spectrum is probably not going to be good, but you should actually be more concerned when people don't have objections. Number two, just put on your fun face, but per, just have fun. I was almost going to say pretend that you're having fun. I don't want you to pretend that you're having fun. I want you to just have fun because it is possible to live in gratitude and realize that the fact that you're breathing right now and the fact that in a moment you're going to take another breath is a gift. And a lot of people don't have that gift. A lot of people haven't made it as far as you've made it. A lot of people don't have the abilities that you have or the intellect that you have. Like there are millions and millions and millions of people that have it worse than I do, that have it worse than you do. Whenever you're in a state of irritation, you're taking for granted all of those things. You're taking for granted your breath. You're taking for granted the gift that you have in life, right? But if you live inside of that gratitude, then you're going to have fun. And nobody is, is ever going to be attracted to an opportunity like Mary Kay where people aren't having fun. This is the thing that most people are missing, in my opinion, my judgment. Most people are missing fun in their life. So when you show up with the thing that most people are missing, they're going to be naturally and, and energetically attracted at a deeper level than the fact that they can make 13% when people buy, you know, a, 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 a product. Right? And the best way to have fun is just smile. Just smile. There's no reason not to smile. The third thing is that you know people have objections, right? So the best way to handle objections, this is more mechanical. The best way to handle objections is actually to do it during the presentation. If you do your presentation and then at the end of the presentation you get into this objection mode, right? Then it feels like a debate, right? You guys might as well be on opposite sides of the courtroom, you know, because they're going to say what they're going to say, you're going to say what you're going to say. One of you has to be right and one of you has to be wrong and they get to decide who's right and wrong. I wouldn't want that kind of combative confrontation. Even if it doesn't get heated or anything, it's still like a win-lose scenario. So the best thing to do is take the main objections. There are three main objections that everybody has. Take those objections and work them into the presentation before the resistance comes up, right at the end, right? So the main objections, I put it in order of ATM so that you can remember when you handle these objections, you're going to print more money. The first objection that people have is ability. Can I do this, right? Most people are going to ask themselves, do I think I can succeed in this? The second one is time. And the third one is what we all love, and that's money. So in your presentation, I wasn't saying that we all love money, although I think we do, but we all love sarcastically when people say, oh, I don't have money, or that costs too much, or the products are too expensive. But if you were to put, handle these objections inside your presentation, give examples of people that didn't have a whole lot of ability, they weren't salespeople, and they still succeeded. Give examples of people that are super busy, and they still succeeded or give ways that they can fit into their schedule and give examples of people that also didn't have a bunch of money or you talk about that money is really about value, right? I mean, anybody who says that Mary Kay is too expensive, if, if, if you put that same price tag, you know, of $100 or a $600 inventory order or a $4,800 order, you know, full store, if you put that same price tag on a house, it'd be surprising how fast those people who have no money find 4,800 bucks because there's more value in the house than what they see in Mary Kay, right? So understanding that money is always a value conversation and then sticking it inside your presentation is one of the best ways to take it away before they even get to it. And finally, the fourth one is instead of even thinking about overcoming objections, what if you just thought about exploring objections? Like, let's just poke. Let's just poke at these ones here. What if you just danced with them, right? And the thing about exploring objections is you want to put it back on them. You know, so if somebody says, I just don't think I have enough time, what most people do is they immediately try to rebut that. They immediately go, well, yes, you do. 
And now for them to join the company, they have to decide that they were wrong and you were right. You know, and they have to go, okay, you're right. I don't have, you know, I do have more time. Or you go, oh, well, you know, that's what I used to think. And then I realized I found more time. Don't use your situation to address their situation because their situation might be totally different than yours or their definition of, of time or not having time could be totally different than yours. So it's very irresponsible and I would say disrespectful for you to take your definition of their objection and put it onto them. And it's difficult, right? It's dangerous. A better way is just ask them a question. What does that mean you don't have enough time? Or how much time do you think you need? Right? I mean, are we talking about five hours or 50 hours? Or how does that make you feel that you don't have enough time? And what is it that you don't have enough time for? Right? Like the more that you put it back on them and just ask questions, the less energy you have, the less confrontation there will be. And the better chance is that they find their own answer because whoever has the objection also has the answer. So if they have the objection and your mouth is moving, there's really not much of a chance that they're going to find the answer in your lips because you don't have their answer. They have their answer. That's why exploring and asking questions instead of telling them the way that they should think or giving them your answer to their problem is never going to work long term. And that's the thing that most people are afraid of when it comes to objections. They're afraid of that energetic conflict. Right? So when you shift your energy around all of this stuff, guess what? You'll have more fun. And when you have more fun, you're definitely going to smile more. Right? You're also going to have more success. You're going to have more people that want to be around you. You're going to have more people that join your business. You're going to have more customers that love you. And ultimately, you're just going to have a better experience of Mary Kay. And you're going to maximize what Mary Kay can do in your life. So hopefully this whole discussion has been valuable for you. As I said early in the beginning, you know, I've never even opened up this whole idea of the Pink Truth website. And it applies to all levels of negativity and it really will help you address anything that's holding you back if you understand these concepts and you dig and you understand the importance of education, empowerment, and all of that stuff. It'll really be a complete game changer for you in your life. So I hope this has been helpful. I want to hear about how it's been helpful. I want you to post on Facebook on the Pink Caddy fan page or right here in the comment section. And for those of you that want to go deeper, I also want to tell you about Ignite Your Breakthrough. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. I've got a group program. It's the first time I've done a Mary Kay only group program since 2014. I'm excited about it, not just to get back into the Mary Kay world, but also because of some of the things that we're going to talk about, right? There's a lot of things that I've learned over the last year and a half that I'm teaching in this program. We're going to go deep into money beliefs and success beliefs, and we're going to go really deep into productivity habits. You know, we're going to, we're going to really attack the foundational challenges that most of you are having in your business because it's the internal stuff that's ultimately going to cause you to succeed or fail. It's not the external stuff. It's the internal stuff. So this program is a group coaching program. And what I thought is that since all of you pretty much have goals that are going to take you through the end of June, then I want to have a coaching program that will also take you through the end of June. So I'll be there to teach content, to answer your questions, to coach you however I can, to provide that support online and over the phone calls all the way through the end of June and help you succeed at whatever level you, know, you want to succeed and however much we can get out of you between now and the end of June. So that's why I set it up to run all the way through June. In total, I think there are about 13, there's either 12 or 13 phone calls. I think there's 13. We've already done three of them. And we're going to close the doors on the program before the next call happens, which is Monday the 11th, I believe, Monday the 11th. So we're going to close the doors on the program uh, before call number four, which is Monday the 11th. So that means if you want to still jump in, you still have a little bit of time, you can jump in. There's a bunch of information. I'm not going to go over all the information here because it, it, would, it would be a lot and it would take a lot longer. But there's a link on this page. If you're on Pink Caddy Handout, hangout rather.com, 
There's a link on this page. Right under the video, if you're on the computer, there's actually a live link that says Ignite Your Breakthrough, or there may have been a button, a yellow button that showed up to the bottom right that says Ignite My Breakthrough. You can click on it there and go to the information page, and it has all the information that you want about the program, and it'll explain what all the bonuses are, etc. If you guys are not on the computer, maybe you're on a cell phone, or you just don't see those links for whatever reason, you, know, you might be on Facebook Live or Periscope or somewhere else, uh, the website is right here, pinkcaddycoach.com forward slash ignite. Pinkcaddycoach.com forward slash ignite. The program is called Ignite Your Breakthrough. There are bonuses well over $500. You actually get access to all of the previous group coaching programs that I've done, and I haven't offered that before. You get a, a coaching call, you get a coupon, you get a, a product coupon in there. So there's a bunch of bonuses worth well over $500. Here's the investment. You have two options. If you want to do it all in full, to $199. Or if you need a payment plan, if that's uh, easier for you, it's $78 times three. And as with everything else, there's a 100% money back guarantee. So if in the first 33 days, you don't get out of the program what you want to get out of the program, you think it's not what I positioned it to be, you don't, you, for whatever reason, you just don't find the value in finishing the program, just let us know and we'll refund all your money. So there's really no risk on your part. If the program doesn't work out for you, you'll just get all your money back, right? And what that allows you to do is just give it a try. Just give it a try because at the end of the day, whether we're talking about your career in Mary Kay or we're talking about your life in general, at the end of the day, what really is going to determine your experience on this planet and your experience in, in business, or your experience in relationships, in any area of achievement, what's really going to determine all of that is did you give it a try? Did you jump? Did you try your best? Did you go for it? Or did you do what most people do and did you hold back for fear? for fear of rejection, for fear of failing, fear of losing money, fear of embarrassment, right? Those are the things that most people are actually more committed to and they make most of their decisions based on the danger of taking action, right? I don't want you to think about what's the danger of taking action. People who end up in mediocrity focus on if I take action, what can go wrong? The most successful people I know focus on what will happen if I don't take action? What will happen if I don't try my best? You know, when I was 13 years old, I was hit by a car as I was driving or riding my bike to school. And by the details of the accident, I should have died. And what that taught me as I was contemplating how, you know, laying on the sidewalk that I, that I could have just been taken from this planet. And as I had surgery and as, as my whole life turned upside down, the biggest lesson that I, got, that I got on my sacred path was that life is fragile. And when I was a 13-year-old kid, I realized that if my life was over right now, I wouldn't be happy with how I lived it. So then I started thinking about having that deathbed conversation with myself. And I was driven by the fear of looking back on my life at some point in time and saying, what could I have become? And knowing in that moment that I didn't give everything that I could and that I didn't make the most out of this gift that God gave me called life. And I didn't do everything that I could. I just knew how gut-wrenching that would be. So I've been driven by the fear of underachieving ever since that moment. And the most successful people I know are driven by the fear of not taking action more than the dangers of taking action. So if you're going to join this program, fantastic. If you're not going to join the program, fantastic, right? I'm inviting, you're deciding, you get to choose. Whatever your journey is, if I'm a part of it in this program, then I can't wait to roll my sleeves up along with you. There's a lot of support that you get in the program. You can jump in and, and listen to the archives literally like in the next few minutes. If you choose to invest into it, you can listen to the archives of the previous calls and then join us on the next live call. So if you're going to jump in, awesome. I can't wait to meet you. Uh, if you're not going to jump in, then hopefully this webinar, this presentation has spoken to your heart. 
Hopefully it's, it's inspired something inside of you that's going to make you a better consultant or make you a better leader, a better director, or make you a better mom or make you a better wife or make you a better daughter or make you a better person or make you a better friend. And if that's the case, then I celebrate you for making that choice to do whatever you've got to do to live the life that you want to live on this planet. So with that, have a fantastic rest of your evening or day, whenever it is that you're watching this. And I will be talking to you really soon. Take care, everybody. Good night. God bless. We'll talk to you soon.